friends. friends, it's Sophia and Liam, and welcome back to another episode of CCTV. Last night was the opening night of the drama department Secret Garden. If you couldn't make it to the Poway Performing Arts Center yesterday, don't worry, they'll be performing tonight and tomorrow night at 7. Sophomores, next Wednesday and Thursday is your sophomore retreat, so get excited. Speaking of faith, let's head over to Roya to hear more about Lent. Hey Dons, as you may know, last week we celebrated Ash Wednesday, which marked the beginning of Lent. Lent is the 40-day period leading up to Easter where we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. There are three main parts of Lent, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let's go to Father Matthew to hear more. So Father Matthew, how can students grow in their prayer life during Lent? In order to grow in our prayer life during Lent, the first thing to do is going to be to commit to some kind of daily prayer. So even if it's only a couple of minutes, five minutes, that's already giving you some kind of contact with God. But once we do have a prayer life sort of established, there's always the possibility of going a little bit deeper. So these are all sort of steps that as we have a prayer life, we can take advantage of to go deeper. And why do we fast during Lent? So fasting has a very specific purpose, which is basically showing us that while we do need bodily sustenance, we can also go without it. And by doing so, we're opening ourselves up to the beautiful things that God wants to give us and have a better spiritual insight. And why is it important to practice almsgiving during Lent? So almsgiving means in some way helping others, reaching out to others. So almsgiving is going to mean that I can forget about myself a little bit and I can turn towards others and give them a helping hand, things that we might not be normally doing during the year. Or even just giving a little bit of my time or my effort or my energy, or even just giving my smile to others, we would be able to consider a form of almsgiving. Thank you, Father Matthew. Now, off to Max to learn more about mock trial. Hey Dons, it's Max, and today we're gonna to be talking to Mr. B about mock trial. So let's head straight into this. So what is mock trial? So mock trial is really students acting like real life attorneys and witnesses. We are given a case this year, a murder trial, in which students play the role and it's very much like the real thing. They all year have practices after school, scrimmages with rival high schools, and all kind of culminating in this final end of the year competition. Are there any events coming up and what happens at a mock trial competition? So there's scrimmages throughout the year. 39 high schools throughout San Diego are competing at the Superior Courthouse of San Diego in front of real judges and real lawyers who act as scorers. And it's very competitive, uh, it's nerve wracking, but it's fun. We've gotten off to a great start and we're hoping we can uh, finish strong. Well done, we learned a lot today about mock trial. Now, back to the studio. Thanks, Max. Attention rising seniors. We know the college application process can be daunting. However, the college counseling team here at Cathedral is hosting the annual college camp this summer to help manage some of that stress. This is a great opportunity for students to spend a week getting ahead of the process before the start of senior year. More information can be found on last week's newsletter. Speaking of getting ahead, the summer school sign-up deadline is March 1st, and the last day to withdraw is Friday, March 29th. Dons, your ID is now mandatory at the cafeteria for buying food with the exemption of the no ID line. Let's head over to Mari to hear more. Hey Dons, it's Mari and I'm here standing in front of our school's lovely cafeteria. There's so much that happens behind these windows, so let's go learn more. I'm here with Moose and he's gonna give us a quick tour of the cafeteria. Hey, what's up guys? If you guys walk around right here, we have our smoothie and coffee station. You'll see up here, we got all the warmers and coolers that we help you guys out, the eight windows. If you guys come through the back, you'll see the kitchen that we redesigned. We got six foot flat grill, fryers, ovens. If you see over here, we prepare all the salads fresh every day, all the sauces, everything. I'm here with Mia, one of the student workers here at the cafeteria. Mia, can you tell me what it's like working here? It's honestly a lot of fun. We get out of class 10 minutes early. We come and set up our stations. We work during the breaks. We get free food. It's a really fun environment. And how can you sign up to work here? Honestly, just come in, ask Moose for an application. You do an interview. You do two weeks of training, and then you can get the job. Now we're gonna do some rapid fire questions with Moose. What's your favorite color? Purple. How long have you been working here at Cathedral? Three years, but went to school here in 2000, graduated in 2011. Who's your favorite person here on campus? Uh, between Mr. Layton, Dr. Calkins, Coach Doyle, Mr. Montali, Coach Jesse, and Mr. Three. What's your favorite item on the lunch menu? Uh, I like the chicken kebab bowl. Do you have anything else to add? Yeah, guys, I'm trying to look and start a student advisory board just so I can get your guys' input. So please keep an eye out for all the Google form that I'm gonna be sending out, and then please fill it out and we can start a student advisory board. Thank you so much to everyone who works in the cafeteria. We appreciate all of your work. Now, off to Emily with sports.
What's up Dons, it's Emily and welcome back to CCTV Sports. Congratulations to our girls basketball team for making it all the way to the Division I CIF Finals. They play tonight at 5 at Otay Ranch. Come out and support. Sliding into their season, the baseball team has their home opener on Tuesday, February 27th against Del Norte. They currently stand as the number one team in San Diego and third in the state. Good luck to the boys on Tuesday and to a winning season. Our Lady Dawn softball team played in their first game of the season against Poway yesterday and will play against Valhalla tomorrow. The girls have nine returning starters and cannot wait to dominate this coming season. Yesterday, the spring volleyball season started off their boys indoor team taking on East Lake and the girls beach team competing against OLB. With both teams having several college commits already, we cannot wait to see where this season goes. The swim and dive team is ready to make a splash this season. Let's head over to Eli to dive into some questions. Hey Dons, it's Selga. I'm about to interview the swim and dive team. Let's get into it. I'm here with Ken. Alyssa, Nora. Who are some star standouts? We got Janie Markowitz, Patsy Hellman, Hannah Wong, Cormac Ryan, and Ben Mears. What's a weekly practice schedule look like? Uh, Monday and Wednesdays we have morning, Tuesday, Thursday afternoon we have lift, and then we have a regular swim after every day. What are some goals this year for this team? Uh, first for our girls relay to make it to states and for boys to go back to back in CIFs. When's the next time the Dons can support you guys? March 7th at home against Bishops. That's a wrap with our swim and dive team. Back to Emily in the studio. Thanks, Eli. Starting off their season shooting low, the boys golf team won the John Morello Open with Vanderbilt commit Michael Reby setting a cathedral record shooting eight under. Trevor Cox also shot an impressive four under par with no bogeys. Great job, boys. After taking a tough loss against Carlsbad last Saturday, our boys basketball team is hoping to make a comeback next Tuesday. Sprinting into the track season, the team takes on Mount Carmel on the 29th for their first dual meet of the year. Our girls lacrosse team will have their first game of the season on March 1st, and the boys have their home opener tonight against San Marcos. To close out their successful season, our boys rugby team not only took home the CIF title last Friday, they were also deemed the number four team in the nation. Congrats, boys. Thanks for tuning in to CCTV Sports this week. Now let's head over to social with Sam and Andres. What's up, Dons? Welcome back to Social. I'm Andres. And I'm Sam. Naturally, for this week on Social, we decided to get the two most socially inept people on CCTV to draw presidents for President's Day while answering some President's Day trivia. Let's get to it. All right, Dons, I'm gonna draw Lincoln. I'm gonna draw Johnson. And while they're drawing, I'll be asking them some President's Day trivia. All right. I don't start. know what Johnson looks like. So maybe Actually, okay. So... I'm gonna draw this. Are we? Just start are, drawing in start? Are the, okay, so which founding father wrote the first draft of the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Is it, <laughs> Good job, guys. Is it Thomas yes. Jefferson? <laughs> All right. That's correct. Uh, who was the first president of the United States? Jim Washington. George Washington. Thank you. No. What was his middle name? Paul. <laughs> How are we feeling, guys? Almost done. You know, I'm pretty locked in. He looks very realistic, I must say. So, which president is known as the Great Magician? Um, I believe it was one of those older ones, Martin Van Buren, perhaps? Correct. Five, four, three, two, one. I saw this for a minute. There's a clear winner right here. Of course it's Martin. Show that camera to me. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you learned a lot with our Amazing contestants. And now back to Liam and Sophia in the studio. Thanks, Social. Those are some really great drawings. And that does it for this week. Have a great weekend, Dons. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week with another episode of CCTV. CCTV.